yeah, we did it. That was a very interesting game. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week uh, or weekend or whenever this goes out. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, a couple things. First and foremost, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to support as well as enter for free giveaways and things like that. We're giving away a draft booster box of Kamigawa uh, on February 23rd. So subscribing is one of multiple ways to enter. I encourage you to check out the details on our website, itresolvesmtg.com. But also, this deck is sick. And this is created by a fellow YouTuber as well as just an all around awesome and fun individual to watch, Mana Man. We have played one of his decks before and it was tremendous. This is no different. Uh, in fact, we've actually played a very similar deck very recently uh, where we were looking to discard a lot of the opponent's things and hopefully win off of that. This plays a similar role, but we've got that menace uh, sub theme and you'll kind of notice that with most of our creatures as we go through. But to talk about this just a little bit, uh, we do have Duress here as a two of getting some cards out of hand as well as the Dread Fuge. This is going to be a great way long term. It has value both in the early game and late game, but we can definitely discard some stuff with both of these, which is fantastic. In the two drop slot, we do have the Disciple and the Expert here. Both of these work really well together. We want to get that Disciple down first if we can and then get the Expert down because they do help each other in terms of the uh, party mechanic here. This is a Cleric. This is obviously a Rogue. We can get both of them down to hit two cards off of the Expert versus just the one if we get it down by itself. Uh, we do have three Meat Hook Massacres and two Infernal Grasp. Great removal in this deck. Just gives us some outs here, of course. And uh, if we do find ourselves against a much faster deck, we can just Meat Hook Massacre for, uh, for a lot there and get stuff out, out of the, uh, the board. Now, some other similar cards that we've seen before. Agadim's Awakening as a full four of here, which is pretty aggressive, but I think good. Uh, we can certainly bring some stuff back, discard some cards, and hopefully do some some massive stuff with that. We do have Nighthawk Scavenger. I've talked about this before. One of my all-time favorite black creatures. Just absolutely powerhouse flying death touch lifelink, and it scales with the graveyard, which I love. Uh, we do have Inscription of Ruin. This is a nice card as well because it's it's flexible. It's lucrative. We can discard some cards. We can destroy a creature, or we can bring something back. Or if we kick it, we can do all of the above, uh, which is kind of the goal. But uh, certainly an aggressive discard is kind of the way to go for this deck, at least in my experience. Uh, one of the new cards from Kamigawa is Biting Palm Ninja, 3-3 three, three for 3. Also has an Injutsu cost of 3. We've actually played with this already. Does enter the battlefield with a Menace counter on it. When it deals combat damage to a player, you can remove that counter if you would like. And when they do, uh, or when you do, the opponent reveals their hand, you discard a card from it that is a non-land card. Definitely an interesting card to try out in this list because hopefully we can get in for an early game attack with one of these guys and hopefully swap it out for this, uh, which is a super powerful card. Um, <clears throat> we do have Blood Vial Purveyor here. Uh, a 5-6 for 4, which is ridiculous. Flying Trample, when an opponent casts a spell, that player creates a blood token. And then whenever it attacks, it gets plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn for each blood token the defending player controls. That is powerful. Now, obviously, we are giving them blood tokens, but we're kind of en enticing them to utilize them and sink their mana into them. So this doesn't get out of hand. So we'll actually see how that goes. I haven't actually played much with the purveyor, so this is going to be a new one for me. I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. Finally, in the uh, the five drop slot here, we do have Turgrid as a two of. We can play on the lantern or just the creature side, both of which are very good. And then finally, we have one of my new favorite cards, Jinju, Junji, Junji. Hope I'm saying that correctly. The Midnight Sky, five five for five, flying and menace. Again, that sub theme. Uh, when it dies, each opponent either discards two cards and loses two life, or we bring a non-dragon creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield and lose two life. We have got some amazing choices here for that uh, mechanic. We can even get one of these guys if the opponent has just one card in hand, just get the card out of hand. Uh, so we've got some really good options there. There, there are three of those in the deck. 
We have three Hive of the Eye Tyrant and two Abandoned Mire, all of which are very good. And then, of course, just some Swamps here. So we're going to try this one out. I want to thank Mana Man because not only is he a fantastic content creator, but a great deck builder. And he does share his deck list. So please go check out uh, Mana Man's channel. I'll try and link him down below so you guys remember to go do that. But let's jump right into the game. Let's see how we do. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And uh, yeah, I think this is actually pretty good. So we can turn one Fuge and then turn two, we've got the Expert into turn three Inscription. Uh, we also have the Infernal Grasp up. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Worth noting, obviously, this only hits, uh, excuse me, without cleaving it, um, some of the smaller things, of course, but I'm actually okay with that. Uh, all of these play a very similar role. We'll take the Javelin Ear out. Um, very interesting hand here where they really just have a bunch of one drops so I'm curious to see how this goes uh let's go ahead and play this down most likely just gonna hit a land here of course but we do hopefully trade off with the javelin ear here which is very very good and then again we should be able to discard the last couple cards here next turn and give them basically just nothing on the field so i'm all too happy to block here i know that this kills but it also trades with this and that's all i really care about so we're going to keep stuff off the field as best we can. Perfect. Let's do this. Uh, yeah. And we're just going to go ahead and push them for discarding a couple cards. Again, I'm more apt to discard cards than deal with what's on the field. We've got the Infernal Grasp in hand here. So we've got a way to solve that problem. But I'd really like to get the cards out of hand and just make sure they can't really do that much. Uh, alternatively, we could have brought our own creature back and just be able to block this. But... It was going to die either way, so I'm actually okay with doing it this way. Now oh, that's quite good. Um, we'll drop this. I'm not going to pay the three. And I... Uh, I think we wait. There's a world where we can hit more value off of this, and there it is right off the bat. Uh, and so we're definitely just going to hit that for one, I think. <clears throat> we do take a couple points of damage to do it, but I think that's worth it. That's really good um yeah i think first things first let's just do this for one get everything out of there um and i will i think go ahead and play the land here um the uh Jonji, Jonji? again i'm i'm butchering the names of this set but this really kind of takes the place of agadim's awakening in the position that we are in right now uh it's not necessarily amazing but it does help us here a good bit uh, and we can actually just kill that at some point. So let's go ahead and get that down. <laughs> just a really powerful card. Cool. Uh, this is all really good from the opponent. But again, we they, they really don't have a good attack here. If they want to go for it, by all means. It's like they are uh, a little smarter. All right. Um, well, first things first. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's go ahead and play this. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this off of here. This is the thing that I'd be worried about more because it does bolster their board and give haste to things that I don't really want them to have haste. And, uh, so this seems like the right play. Wow. Okay. Um, definitely just going to attack in here. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to leave this up because we don't have to pull the trigger yet, but, uh, yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape here. I am going to go aggressive now. All right, there we go, guys. That was the most efficient game. Man, oh, man, what a deck. Let's jump into game two. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, here we are for our second game. Now, this is a much slower hand. We really don't have a lot going for us in this one. However, we do have some very good three and four drops as well as the Meat Hook Massacre. I think we try it. I'm not overly optimistic, but I'm going to give it a shot. If we find ourselves against goblins again, we'd actually be kind of okay. Interesting. Okay, Elder Fang uh, Disciple actually really helps here because we can just go ahead and get a card out of hand immediately. Um, so we'll see what they do. Looks like they're just going to ping for one here. Do they have a follow-up play? Looks like not the case. Perfect. Let's go ahead and drop that Disciple. Uh, hopefully get... Even if it is just a land, it's a land that they were going to play. So any card here is helpful. They're probably going to um, kill this off and draw a couple cards here, if I had to guess. Maybe not. There it is. There's the Deadly Dispute. Again, kind of expected that. They're going to kill the Elder Fang Disciple here. This is all kind of okay. 
we're not really in this to uh, worry about all that. We're just here to try and push through some of these uh, discards. Now, crucially, they do get to ramp a little here because of that. Ah, okay. Crawl from the cellar. Interesting. So we have to discard two cards. Uh, interesting. Okay. What do we need to discard here? I think, ooh, that purveyor is so good. I think it's these two. We'll see. I'm not confident, but I think that'll be okay. Uh, let's drop this. Let's go ahead and drop that Nighthawk Scavenger. If they have a kill spell for it, they have a kill spell for it. But I think this is a very aggressive three drop for them uh, that they are going to just have to answer it this turn. And then following that up, we've got the purveyor here. So we'll see. Um, okay. Nothing from the opponent. That's fascinating. Uh, crucially, this is a legendary land, by the way, guys. We can't just run that out. Um, hmm. I think we attack first. See what they have. They could very easily just have an instant speed spell here to kill the Nighthawk. Though it looks that, like that might not be the case. Um, so the question becomes, do we run this out? Uh... I think we do. I think we keep the pressure on. I think that this is just a better option for us. Um, okay. So we actually, I mean, trade with this, oh, or excuse me, kill this actually pretty easily. They do have the Infernal Tutor there. That's annoying, but fine. Uh, or not the Infernal, the Infernal Grasp, not the Tutor. Goodness gracious. They do have blue in their deck. That's crucial. Okay. Curious to see how this actually plays out then. Um, don't love our position because we can't necessarily fight this off. I mean, we can trade with it, but this actually just gets to come back. <laughs> um, they get a very strong attack in here. The only trick is we do gain some, some solid life off of this, so we'll see. Definitely play the land. Um, so we can utilize this. Uh, alternatively, we can just play the Acquisitions Expert, which I do kind of like, uh, just to get a card out of hand here. Probably not going to be anything super good, but we got to try for it, I think. And if they do have a kill spell, they kill the Scavenger, but then they also probably just play the other cards, so... Or discard the other cards, so we might be okay. Okay, a Fell Stinger. A good card, for sure. Um, we definitely attack in here. We gain the life and deal four. Uh, now, if they have a kill spell again, they're going to use it. It's like not. So we can bring something back with the mire. Um, and we've got a lot of good options, in fact. So I'm, I'm curious. Very curious. We are offsetting the damage we're losing for the most part. Um, but crucially, they're not gaining life, which is making the math a lot more difficult for them. Uh, yeah. So they could bring back a Fell Stinger if they wanted. Sacrificing this. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't have done that first to get an extra point of damage in if that was going to be the case, but that's cool. Perfectly fine by me. Okay. Um, they've got one card in hand, right? All right. So first things first. We are going to attack before we do anything else. Let's go ahead and channel this. Now we've got a decision to make. Uh, oh. Ha! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> we'll go ahead and play the land here. I think that's okay. Uh, yeah, the Midnight Sky is just ridiculous. I mean, we have to throw that out. Okay. Yeah, that's actually really good because those little tutus do block and kill the Nighthawk Scavenger. Um, but we'll see what happens. Take nine. I think we just take the nine. Okay. Oh, also quite good. Um, okay. Well, first things first, I'm going to send both of these at the... Lol, I believe. We need to get that out of there if we can. So they're going to spread this out. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, maybe not. 
Okay. That's fine. So that dies before it gets the counters on it. That's why that's important. Um, now, let's see. I think, yeah, I think we just throw the Midnight Sky out. And this just gives us a little bit of backup. So even if this dies, which we'll probably trade it here. Um, and then that way we can hopefully get in for a good bit here. Curious to see if they attack. We're going to attack with this. Uh, I'm not going to block that. Let that happen. That's fine. It's another land. Um... So we can actually do a lot here. Um, all right, well, I guess we do that. All right, targeted opponent, they discard two cards. We get Elder Fang Disciple, which isn't really all that helpful, but then we also kill the Felstinger. Yeah. Okay, they're gonna sacrifice. The trick here is though they so they get the treasure token and then have to discard both of those cards. Um, I think we attack in with both here. Okay. So we are at eight. I think we just win. Yeah, we did it. That was a very interesting game. All right, guys, we did it. That was game two, two wins in a row. Let's see if we can go for three. That was awesome. All right, guys, here we are for game number three, probably going to be our last game. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think we keep this. It's not necessarily the most exciting hand, but we get a turn one to rest. This may not hit anything. I have no idea, um, but it looks like it will. What are we more scared of? Um, hmm. I think it's the Eladar Retreat, actually. So we have Menace a lot throughout our deck, and we have ways to deal damage to the Planeswalker that can kill it. The Felidar Retreat, we don't have another way to deal with it. So it seems like one of those things where we just kind of have to have to go for it there. We're going to Infernal Grasp the Voice of the Blessed that they are going to play now, uh, which is perfect. So, whoops. Let's go ahead and kill that now. Um, we're going to discard a couple cards from their hand, and then theoretically we should be able to get that turn four Purveyor down, which is a huge threat against that Soren. Um, let's go ahead and force them to discard two cards. Let's get a couple things out of hand. Uh, yeah, feel okay about this. We could have actually cleaved this just to get that Soren out of hand, but they're actually behind a turn anyway. <laughs> Uh, from being able to play it, I mean, so I'm not actually that stressed about it. Um, they also don't have black sources. Wow, they discarded a Doom Scar. That's actually pretty big against us. So, I mean, they wouldn't know that at this point, but that's pretty good. All right, there's their black source. They do have the second black source, so they can get uh, a little aggressive here. I think what we do is throw this out tabs. We cleave this, and we get that Soren out of hand here. All right, they're down to a land and an unknown with a veteran on the field. We've got two purveyors in hand. All right, Cleric of Life's Blood is very, very good. Um, for sure, that's a fantastic card. Uh, but that's all they got now. Um, and Purveyor does outpace that right now at the very least. So let's just throw out a Purveyor. Now, if they have a land, they get basically no value for the turn. Um, Wedding announcement is pretty good. They crucially, though, don't have a card to discard to this, so that's helpful. And then next turn, we actually just get to attack in. Ooh. All right. Um, hmm. I might just want to kill this cleric. In fact, yeah, I'm just going to kill that. That's not a card I want to stick around for, if that makes sense. And so I'm all too happy to do this. We'll get an attack for six in, which is a pretty strong attack given that they really don't have, I mean, they've got a little bit of pressure and they'll draw a card off of this wedding announcement, I assume, but that's kind of it. They can sack the blood token here, um, but that does put them a mana behind. 
so that's helpful. And depending on what they draw, we can just dredge fu dread fugit, uh, especially if it's just like a four drop or something. All right, they're gonna draw a card. Perfect. Okay. Um, I think. Let's attack first. Let's see what we get. <clears throat> they may crack this in response, uh, which is kind of okay. This is an interesting. This this deck in particular seems to have a lot of like really intricate play patterns, which I find really interesting. Like, do you play things prior to combat to get a card out of hand? Do you not worry about it? Um, you know, it could be any number of things here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna dread fuge and not really worry about the board here. I'm not that stressed about that. So let's see what they've got. We're gonna force them to hit either play something or we're just gonna get a card out of hand. Now they could be sandbagging. They could just have lands, but looks like they're not. <laughs> uh, that is a very good hit. I'm very glad we did that. Um, yeah, that was really sick. Granted, this still tramples over their little 2-1 two, 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 spider menace reach guys that they get so I'm not really that worried about it but that's fine I'm curious they didn't attack with two I think they just want the tokens I suppose which makes sense um hmm I think I'm just going to attack with the Purveyor first. Let's just do this. We're going to keep him on uh, the pressure here. We could have also attacked with the Hive. That would have been the other decision. But I think what I'd like to do is drop the genuinely the Nighthawk Scavenger. Solely because this has lifelink. Um, so now either one of these is a must answer card. Essentially. And Loth is good. Not going to do it though. Um... Yeah. Cool. You know what would be great right now is a Meat Hook Massacre for two. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Um, so these both have flying and, uh, or excuse me, menace and reach. So they can block these, but it's not going to solve their problem. Hm. All right. Um, I'm gonna attack here. I don't actually care about the Loth, I don't think. All right, let's get some stuff off the field. Obviously, it's just gonna be these two, but uh, that's still really good. So they do trade the Nighthawk Scavenger here for the record. They get to uh, kill that. But we crucially have a lot more good stuff, so <laughs> that's kind of fine. These also have diminishing returns for the opponent, by the way. They can really only, I mean, they can cycle through them, I guess, if they want, but it's not really that good to do so. Interesting they double blocked. I wonder why. They didn't have to do that. Yeah, resolve all. They get their counters. That's fine. And then we'll just prepare. So I've got two trampling flying threats. And they have a card in hand. And a Loth on the field. So they can draw another card. Um, or just spit out a couple menace tokens. But the double trample is really key here. The only thing I'd be slightly worried about is a sweeper. Because what they could do is sweep the board like a Doomscar. If they have Doomscar, they sweep the board, they spit out the two tokens, and then the Hive of the Eye Tyrant can't just get through, if that makes sense. Granted, we do still have a Nighthawk Scavenger available to us, so like long term, I still think we win that fight. Um, but wow, what a, what a fascinating deck. All right. Cool, you did it. Um, yeah, so I think we just win, theoretically. I'm curious as to what this unknown card is. Interesting. I'm not gonna block. I don't know what this is, but I'm not stressing about it. it makes sense to attack, I suppose, because they really can't do anything else. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. All right, I'm just gonna attack. We'll see what they have. They might have something. I I mean, they could very easily, like, 
trying to think what they could have because even if they kill one of these and then double block the other we still have the trample damage okay that doesn't matter we still have trample damage <laughs> Uh, one thing to note, the Seed of the Empire is definitely a card that everybody's going to have to consider in the near future. Well, from here on out. All right, we won. That was an undefeated run with Mono Black Menace. What in the world? What a deck. Uh, let's talk about it. All right, first and foremost, Mana Man deserves a million credits for this. This is an amazing deck. I absolutely love it. I think we have a new mono black deck to worry about other than just the control deck. I'm not saying this replaces the control deck by any means. However, I do think this is a very, very strong deck. The discard mixed with the very difficult threats uh, and the recursion factor with Agadim's Awakening, which we really didn't get to see, but also the Midnight uh, Sky as well, Junji. I think that's his name. <laughs> Um, all of that combined equals a really, really strong uh, deck that we were able to, to get an undefeated run with. I mean, that's pretty amazing. So I'm beyond happy with that. I really enjoyed this deck. Again, thank you, Mana Man, for sharing. Everybody, try this out. Go check out Mana Man. Go hang out with him. And uh, yeah, God, that was a fun one. I really enjoyed that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a comment down below. It really would mean a lot to me. It's a great way to support the channel. And if you subscribe... You're entered to win that giveaway. Yeah, free cards. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you again very soon for some more gameplay videos.